Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. This Quad 405-2 may seem familiar to you, that's because this is the one that I did a rather long full refurbishment video on about a month ago or so. And I was happily using this unit this afternoon when I lost a channel. Um, I kind of heard a, a humming sound in one channel. The humming started immediately when I got one of those you've got mail sounds. And at the time I thought that maybe my DAC or something had gone funny with my laptop because I heard the you've got mail sound and then this humming came and it didn't go away. But then you might also remember on another video that I made a Save Your Speakers uh, Relay Kit. And because I don't really trust the, um, the so-called protection circuitry on these cords, I had one of those relay kits on the output of this. And uh, not too long after this started, the relay kicked in, or kicked out, I should say, to disconnect the speakers, which was quite interesting. And then um, a little while later, the relay kicked back in and I'd lost the channel altogether. So I've pulled the covers off this thing. And what I can tell just with my very initial inspection, and you might be able to see this too, is that this fuse here is open circuit. And um, I can guarantee you if I do this, yep, it's definitely open circuit. And we'll see if the other one is. Doesn't look like the other one is, just visually. Yeah, the other fuse is okay. So something has failed, or well, something has caused this board to blow a fuse. So I'm going to have to do some further investigations uh, into what is causing this problem. Okay, so what I want to establish first is whether the fault condition still exists. So I've replaced the fuse and I've got my dim bulb tester, so there's no load on the outputs, but this can be a really quick way to blow fuses and it gets quite expensive after a while. So hopefully if the fault is still there, the dim bulb tester will catch it uh, instead of blowing the fuse. So let's see. Oh yeah. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right at all. So easy way to tell this for sure will be to just um, pull these two fuses out. And this is the one that I just put in, so it should not have blown. And it hasn't. This one's okay as well. So, just plug the mains back in, turn the dim bulb tester on again. Yeah, see, look at that. That did not happen when I had those fuses plugged in on that board. So, again, just to revalidate the test, I'll just pop these back in. A bit tricky. Okay, plug the mains back in. See how it stays bright, didn't go dim. So there's definitely a fault condition on that board. So something obviously has failed such that it's consuming or allowing much more current to pass through it than it should. Um, I didn't replace any of the solid state devices except for the, um, the, the op amp. And I don't expect it will be the op amp. So possibly one of the driver transistors may have failed or even one of the, the mains, main transistors. Hopefully it won't be too difficult to find out. So that'll be the next step. Okay guys, I mentioned in my refurb video how wonderful these things are and that the side panels come off and you can access everything on the back of the board to start metering things out. So transistor 9 and transistor 10 are our 
output transistors. So if I have a look here, that's charging up into a capacitor. That's across the collector and the emitter of transistor 9. If we have a look up here, well, well, well. That reads as a dead short. So that kind of suggests to me that this transistor, transistor 10, has failed. We've got our driver transistors here, driver transistor 8 and transistor 7. So if we have a look at across the emitter and collector of those, See about 23 ohms, and this one here, that kind of looks like it's charging up into a capacitor, whereas this one, electric emitter, 23 ohms, which I'm probably going to find, yeah, if I look across the, the base and the collector of this one, I see 22 ohms. So this very precursory meter is suggesting that transistor 10 has failed. So I'm going to need to pull this board out and then pull the transistor out to confirm that it has actually failed. If it has failed, then I wouldn't be replacing just one of them. I need to replace both transistors. Uh, so anyway, the next step will be to get it out and confirm that that is a fault and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so my OnSemi MJ15003Gs have finally showed up from Farnell. Um, so just recapping, I got these MOSFET ones locally when I was doing the refurb on this amplifier. I didn't use them because I found that their current gain was quite low. Yes, we're still within spec, but very low. About So I just tested one of these again. It was 21. And I've tested these two. One of them was 68. The other one's 57. So that's much more like it. So I'm going to whack these two new transistors into this amplifier module. Gain just as I do so remembering how critical it is that we have these little plastic sleeves in here so that we don't short the case to the chassis. So let's get those mounted now. Okay, so these transistors are now mounted and I have checked with the multimeter to make sure that they are not shorting to the chassis and they are not. So we just need to solder these in and hopefully that will be everything that we need to do apart from cleaning up the flux on this board. So those are soldered in. I'll just give this a bit of a clean up. So this board is cleaned up now, ready to go back in to be put back into our amplifier. So let's do that. Okay, so as you can see, the amplifier board has been refitted. It's reconnected. I've got the dim bulb tester connected because even though I could verify that the problem was that one of the final transistors had failed, I don't know for sure whether something else caused that. I don't think so, but I don't want to take any chances. So if something catastrophic does happen again, I don't want to just blow out another final transistor. That would be really disappointing. So if there is some other fault somewhere else that I haven't found yet, the dim bulb tester should catch that. So let's see what happens. Okay, so that's quite encouraging. You'll recall um, last time that the bulb stayed bright. Just checking the DC on the outputs, 2.1 millivolts, that's fine. Ooh, that is not right. Minus 9.5 volts DC. This is the board that we've just worked on. 
minus 9.5 volts. That is not right. So that suggests that there is still something not right with his amplifier. Okay, so I found R7 3K3 as open circuit. So this is a feed to the 15 volt Zeners, which is supply for the uh, op amps. So yeah, so R7 is open. I've decided to replace R7 and the two Zeners, D1 and D2. While I'm at it, I'll replace R8 as well. So yeah, so here are the components that I have removed. R7, this is the one that's open, uh, but I'm going to replace all four of them. Okay, so we have our new components fitted. One, two, three there. And the other one is down here. So let's get this board installed and see how we go. Okay, let's see what happens this time. That's encouraging. We no longer have DC volts on the output. That's the good board, 1.5 millivolts DC. This is the one we've just been working on. 0 0.05 volts DC. So I'm just going to slightly rearrange things here so that I can meter it more easily. And just check the plus or minus 15 volts. Just before I do that, I can just easily check the, check the supplies. Uh, let's check this one here. Minus 41, plus 41, okay, yeah, so no DC on the output. Okay, I just want to change the axis so I can check the plus and minus 15 volts. Okay, so just trying to check the plus and minus 15 volts. That should be down here somewhere. That's plus 15 volts DC, and this one is well, minus 14.5, and that one, and that one's exactly, well, yeah, 14.5. So we've got plus 14.5, we've got minus 14.5. There we go. Okay, we're all hooked up to this amplifier now to test it. I've got my test speakers hooked up through my UPC 1237 protection box. I have checked already, as you saw, to make sure there's no DC on the output. That's what will kill speakers. Uh, and I've got my iPad function generator. So let's plug this in and see if it works. Okay, it probably doesn't need to be quite that loud. That's better. And, um, yeah, so that's the, well, it's actually the right channel, but it's my left because everything's turned around. But that's the channel that we repaired. The other channel was working already. So that's both channels. That's the channel we repaired. So that's encouraging. So it looks like this is working again. I'll put the covers on it and do a bit more of a proper test. I'll come back to you once the covers are back on.
Okay guys, so that was our final listening test. Seems to have been successful on this Quad 405-2, which you can see we've got the covers back on. So fingers crossed, hopefully that's everything resolved on this one for now. Here are the parts that we removed. So six components, two of these were actually dead. You recall that one of the final transistors was dead and that one resistor was dead and we replaced these and hopefully we've now got this resolved. So thank you so much for coming along with me on this video. Please do subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much in getting the word out to help other people watch my content. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.